I hope you are clear with the basics of the direct mapping. Now let me mention few important points to note. The tags in the cache are stored separately in a directory. And this directory is called tag directory. And to find the size of tag directory, we take number of bits in the tag, then we multiply with number of lines. So I can write this as tag directory size is tag bits multiplied by number of cache lines. Next, sometimes in the tag directory, we store some extra information bits like valid bit. That is when, when the cache is empty, the valid bit is set to zero. And when data is loaded, the valid bit is set to one. Similarly, there could be a replacement bit or a modified bit, something like that. All these bits are called as meta information. So those extra information bits are also sometimes padded. So these are called meta bits. Now, if they mention that the tag directory has tag bits as well as the meta bits, then the size of the tag directory will change. So here is the formula. When the meta bits are given, the tag directory size will be the total number of bits that is tag bits plus the meta bits into the number of lines. So this is meta bits. I hope you are clear with this. And next, for direct mapping, one comparator is sufficient. Because we don't really search, we already know the line number, we can just go there, we can use one comparator and compare the tag bits. What about the size? The size is same as the size of same as tag bit size. So if we have tag bits 2, the comparator size is 2 bits. If it is 4 bits, comparator size is 4 bits. So I can title it as tag bits, number of tag bits. Okay, now let's try one more question. An 8 KB direct mapped write back cache is organized as multiple blocks, each of size 32 bytes. The processor generates 32 bit addresses. The cache controller maintains the tag information for each cache block comprising of the following valid bit, modified bit, as many bits as the minimum needed to identify the memory block. So we have valid bit, then modified bit. The rest of the bits are nothing but the tag bits. What is the total size of the memory required by the cache controller to store the metadata that is all the tags for the cache? So basically they are asking the tag directory size. This is a question asked in gate 2011 for 2 marks. Okay, to solve this, let's try the given data. It is 8KB cache. So cache size is 8KB. 8 is 2 power 3, k is 2 power 10, this is 2 power 13 bytes. So we need 13 bits per cache address. Then block size is given as 32 bytes. So the block size is 32 bytes, which is 2 power 5 bytes. So we need 5 bits for block offset. Then they have given the physical address is 32 bits. So physical address is 32 bit. Now let's draw the diagram. The physical address is 32 and the cache address is 13. So the leftover bits are the tag bits, which is physical address minus cache address. So 32 minus 13, that is 19 bits. And when we look at the uh, question, we are supposed to find the total size for the tags. So basically they're asking the tag directory size and we have some meta information as well. So I can write this as tag bits plus the meta bits multiplied by the number of cache lines. So in this tag bits we know, but meta bits, we need to write it. So the meta bits, we have one valid bit and one modified bit. So one plus one. So we have two meta bits. Then how about the number of lines? So number of lines is cache size by block size. This is 2 power 13 by 2 power 5, which is 2 power 8. All right, now we have the data. So let's solve this. So this is 
tag bits we have 90 then meta bits we have 2 and number of lines is 2 power 8 this is 21 into 256 this is 5376 bits therefore the answer is option d now before i proceed to the next mapping technique let me discuss the disadvantages of the direct mapping and for this i'll take this particular example so here we have a main memory a cache and cpu is generating some requests so it is asking for so these are blocks actually block 0 block 4 block 0 and block 4 all right initially the cache is empty now the first request is block 0 so the the CPU will check for 0. Now here data is not there. So it will go to the main memory then pull the data. Data is pulled. So we have block 0 onto line 0. So the first one it is actually a mess. We could not get the data in the cache. Now the next request is B4. Then B4 position is again line 0. But here we see that it is block 0. So the data has to be changed. So let's change this. Now block 4 will be loaded onto the cache. So because it was not available this is again a mess then next the request is b0 but here we see it is block 4 so again this has to be removed now we need to copy the block 0 to here so let me change this so again this is a mess next is b4 again this is b0 so this will be copied this will become b4 so this is also a mess if you observe carefully we had four requests and because of the predefined placement these two can be placed only in this particular line even though the other slots are free we cannot use them so this restriction on the placement is actually a disadvantage in direct mapping